So we are going to discuss what is Duritanj, when is a planet in Duritanj, and what kind of adverse results it gives. हम लोग आज बात कर रहे हैं एक बड़े स्पेशल टॉपिक की जो ज्यादा डिस्कस नहीं होता है ज्यादा पता भी नहीं होगा क्योंकि कम ही किताबों में इसका मेंशन मिलता है लेकिन हमने जब इस पर एक्सपेरिमेंटेशन किया तो हमें कुछ बड़े अच्छे रिजल्ट्स मिले तो वो मैं आप लोगों से शेयर कर रहा हूं वॉट इज दुरितांश सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द डेफिनेशन Uh, in the classics, the all the twenty-seven nakshatras have been divided into three groups. Nakshatron ke divisions bahut type ke hain, or koi urdhu mukh hai, koi adho mukh hai, koi tiryang mukh hai, koi kuch aur tarah se division kiye hue hain. Matlab the different kinds of divisions, even there are too many different kinds of divisions. So this is. also one kind of division and what is this division like these are the first division is creation the second division is maintenance i mean the second part of this is maintenance and the third part is destruction isko sanskrit mein jo likha gaya hai wo ye hai creation means srishti maintenance means sthiti जो स्थिति है वो वैसे ही रहे पैदा तो आप हो गए पैदा और मरने के बीच में जो टाइम है जिसमें आपको मेंटेन करना है वो मेंटेनेंस से पता लगता है और डिस्ट्रक्शन जो पैदा हुआ है वो मरेगा ये निश्चित है तो इस तरह से सारे नक्षत्रों को डिवाइड किया गया है इसको आप ऐसे भी कह सकते हैं कि स्थिति सृष्टि जो क्रिएशन है वो ब्रह्मा जी के नाम से है मेंटेनेंस जो है यानी स्थिति वो विष्णु भगवान के नाम से है और डिस्ट्रक्शन वो शिव जी के नाम से है तो शिव जी का जो रुद्र स्वरूप है जो तांडव नृत्य है वो डिस्ट्रक्शन के लिए है वो संहार के लिए है द वर्ड यूज्ड इन संस्कृत लैंग्वेज फॉर डिस्ट्रक्शन इज संहार संहार का मतलब मारना मारना या मरना या मर जाना तो इसको कैसे यूज करना है तो अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस सिस्टम स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम अश्विनी द फर्स्ट नक्षत्र इज अ सृष्टि नक्षत्र द सेकेंड इज स्थिति नक्षत्र एंड द थर्ड इज अ संहार नक्षत्र एंड देन द साइकिल रिपीट मतलब क्या हुआ इसका कि अश्विनी जो है वो सृष्टि नक्षत्र है भरणी जो है वो स्थिति नक्षत्र है और कृतिका जो है वो संहार नक्षत्र है ठीक है आया सबको समझ में अब इसके बाद जब ये तीन पूरे हो गए तो अब कृतिका के बाद आ जाएगा रोहिणी तो रोहिणी फिर से सृष्टि नक्षत्र है मृगशिरा फिर से स्थिति नक्षत्र है और आर्द्रा फिर से संहार नक्षत्र है और उसके बाद फिर आर्द्रा के बाद आपका पुनर्वसु वो सृष्टि नक्षत्र है पुष्य जो है वो स्थिति नक्षत्र है और अश्लेष जो है वो संहार नक्षत्र है और ये साइकिल अगले ट्रायड में भी रिपीट होती है देर इट वुड स्टार्ट विद मघा etc and we will go down to jeshtha and then similarly for the third triad it would start from mula and end in revati to isme hum kya dekhte hain ki every third nakshatra counted from ashwini is a sanghar nakshatra we are focusing only on sanghar nakshatra and we are not going to talk about srishti and sthiti in this presentation हमारा कंसर्न अभी इस प्रेजेंटेशन में केवल संहार नक्षत्र है तो इसी बात को हम ऐसे भी कह सकते हैं कि नक्षत्र ऑफ सन राहु एंड मरकरी आर ऑल संहार नक्षत्र ठीक है क्योंकि एवरी थर्ड है ना ये एंड दीज टोटल 
नाइन आउट ऑफ ट्वेंटी सेवन नक्षत्र अभी तीन तो मैंने आपको गिनाई कृतिका आर्द्रा और अश्लेषा उसके बाद फिर मघा उत्तर फाल्गुनी और ये आपका स्वाति और ज्येष्ठा ये नेक्स्ट में आ गए और तीसरा भी आप लोग अपने आप समझ सकते हैं तो इस तरह से नौ नक्षत्र जो हैं वो संघार नक्षत्र है आउट ऑफ ट्वेंटी सेवन इसका मतलब अट्ठाईस नक्षत्र सेफ है अठारह नक्षत्र सेफ है उनमें प्रॉब्लम नहीं है कम से कम ये प्रॉब्लम नहीं है अब इसमें भी एक और कैबिनेट है विच इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग वो है द प्लैनेट दैट फॉल्स इन द थर्ड और फोर्थ पदा ऑफ एनी संघार नक्षत्र फॉल्स इन दुरितांश अब ये आपको मालूम है कि हर नक्षत्र के चार चरण या चार पद होते हैं तो यह कहा यह गया है कि पहले और दूसरे के ऊपर ध्यान मत दीजिए फिलहाल इस काम के लिए आप थर्ड और फोर्थ पद के ऊपर ही ध्यान दीजिए तो जो थर्ड और फोर्थ पद होगा संघार नक्षत्रों में वो दूरितांश में चला गया ये लुब्बे लुबाब है इस पूरी स्लाइड का इसी बात को थोड़ा सा हम और आगे क्लियर करते हैं अभी रुक जाइए लेकिन पहले ये समझ लीजिए वट हैपन्स वेन अ प्लानट इज इन दुरितांश मतलब वो सूर्य के राहु के या मरकरी के नक्षत्र में होना चाहिए और थर्ड या फोर्थ पद में होना चाहिए तब वो प्लानट दुरितांश में माना जाएगा ठीक है और द प्लानट दैट इज इन दुरितांश मीन्स इट इज कैपेबल ऑफ कॉजिंग ट्रबल और इन ऑस्पिशियस एडवर्स रिजल्ट दो का मतलब बुरा होता है जैसे दो स्थान छह आठ बारह को दो स्थान बोलते हैं तो वो क्यों दो स्थान बोलते हैं क्योंकि आ, उनसे एडवर्स रिजल्ट मिलते हैं इसी तरह से दुरितांश दुरित मीन्स बैड एडवर्स एंड अंश मीन्स नवांश अगर अंश से पहले कुछ और ना लगा हुआ हो कोई सफिक्स ना लगा हुआ हो सॉरी प्रीफिक्स ना लगा हुआ हो तो उसका मतलब नवांश से ही होता है तो दुरितांश का मतलब यह है कि वो प्लैनेट जो थर्ड और फोर्थ चरण में है या फोर्थ पद पद में है वो नवांश में कहा गए हैं तो अगर उसमें कोई प्लैनेट है तो वो प्लैनेट दुरितांश में हो गया जिनको अभी ये बात पूरी तरह समझ में नहीं आई है वो अभी जब एग्जाम्पल वगैरह देखेंगे तो एकदम क्रिस्टल क्लियर हो जाएगी कोई दिक्कत नहीं है अब एक और मजेदार चीज है वो ये है कि जब आप ये थर्ड और फोर्थ चरणों को देखेंगे नवांश में तो क्या होगा दैट यू विल फाइंड दैट दीज प्लैनेट्स वुड बी इन आइदर इन अक्वेरियस और इन पाइसिस साइन क्या तो कुंभ में जाएगा वो या मीन में जाएगा कौन सा प्लैनेट जो संघार नक्षत्रों में है और थर्ड और फोर्थ चरण में साइमल्टेनियसली है तो कुछ कैलकुलेशन ऐसी है नवांश की कि वो हमेशा जाके बैठेगा अक्वेरियस में या पाइसिस में इसकी भी डिटेल में अभी आपको दिखाता हूं तो क्योंकि वो क्लियर है बिल्कुल कि अक्वेरियस में जो प्लैनेट नवांश चार्ट देखिए अक्वेरियस में जो प्लैनेट बैठ गया वो दुरितांश में है या जो पाइसिस में या मीन में जो बैठ गया प्लैनेट नवांश चार्ट में वो दुरितांश में चला गया यानी वो आज के हमारे सब्जेक्ट मैटर के अंतर्गत आ गया देर फॉर इट इज ईजी टू स्पॉट अ प्लैनेट इन दुरितांश इवन बाय अ करसरी लुक एट द नवांश चार्ट फट से दिखेगा आपको अच्छा ये 11 नंबर में जो प्लानट नवांश चार्ट में है वो दुरितांश में चला गया 12 नंबर में जो है वो दुरितांश में चला गया और साउथ इंडियन चार्ट में तो उसकी लोकेशन फिक्सड है अक्वेरियस की और पाइसिस की तो वहां तो आपकी निगाह बड़े आराम से पहुंचेगी ही so that is so very easy to spot what is in duritansh which means aapko jo pehle jo maine slides dikhai hain unki aapko yaad rakhne ki itni zarurat nahi hai lekin background kya hai iski genesis kya hai ye kahan se aaya hai wo samajhne ke liye to aapko jo theoretical background maine diya hai uski zarurat padegi 
बट एक्चुअल प्रैक्टिस में तो आपके लिए बस अक्वेरियस और पाइसिस ही देखना है नवाज चार्ट में द क्लासिक्स आर बाय एंड लार्ज साइलेंट ऑन हाउ टू मेक यूज ऑफ द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ द प्लैनेट इन दुरितांश वहां सिर्फ दुरितांश की डेफिनेशन दी हुई है और बस ये शब्द पकड़ा दिया है हम लोगों के भाई ये दुरितांश होता है अब इसको कैसे यूज करना है ये आपकी इमेजिनेशन पर आपकी अंडरस्टैंडिंग पर आपके एक्सपीरियंस के ऊपर छोड़ दिया है बस ये बता दिया कि ये अंश खराब होता है बस छुट्टी उससे ज्यादा कुछ नहीं बताया गया है नाउ द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ अवर एक्सपेरिमेंटेशन विद प्लान इन दुरितांश प्रोडेड एंड पुस्ड बाई जस्टिस एस एन कपूर इज प्रेजेंटेड हियर to be honest i didn't know about this subject till kapoor sahab uh, sent me an article on this and when i tried it out i found it very uh, interesting and useful and there is some application of this thing even in kapoor sahab's chart which you can uh, see in the book that i've just mentioned because there is a complete case study about kapoor sahab there okay so ये हो सकता है आप में से कुछ लोग अभी भी इस बारे में थोड़ा सा चिंता कर रहे होंगे अक्वेरियस और पाइसिस को सिंगल आउट क्यों कर दिया है आउट ऑफ द ट्वेल्व साइन व्हाट्स रॉन्ग विद दिस ये बली के बकरे अक्वेरियस और पाइसिस को क्यों बनाया है तो उसके लिए एक बहुत ही सिंपल एक्सरसाइज कर लेते हैं और वो ये है कि ये नवांशी कैलकुलेशन कैसे होती है आपको पता है सबको कैसे होती है लेकिन मैं उसको यहाँ फिर भी दिखा रहा हूँ कि जो अश्विनी का पहला पद होता है या पहला चरण होता है वो नवांश में कहा जाता है फ्रॉम जीरो डिग्री टू थ्री ट्वेंटी मिनट्स वो एरीज में जाता है ठीक है अश्विनी का दूसरा पद नेचुरली एरीज से नेक्स्ट में जाएगा वो टॉरस में जाता है थर्ड पद जेमिनी में जाता है फोर्थ पद कैंसर में जाता है ठीक है तो ये पहला जो नक्षत्र है अश्विनी उसके चारों चरण हमने देख लिए कि ये जा शुरू होते हैं एरी से फिर टॉरस में फिर जेमिनी में फिर कैंसर में ठीक है अब आइए अब अगले नक्षत्र पर भरणी इसका फर्स्ट पद जाता है लियो में हमेशा भरणी का मतलब ये भी है जितने भी वीनस के नक्षत्र हैं सब ऐसे ही जाएंगे यहाँ पे भी अश्विनी या जो केतु के जितने भी नक्षत्र हैं उनका सिस्टम यही रहेगा पहला चरण एरीज में जाएगा दूसरा टॉरस में जेमिनी कैंसर में यही सिस्टम फॉलो होगा तो वीनस के नक्षत्र का सेकंड पद जाएगा वर्गों में थर्ड पद जाएगा लिब्रा में और फोर्थ पद जाएगा स्कॉर्पियो में सो हियर वी आर सींग इन सीक्वेंस हाउ द नवांश इज कास्ट एंड इट गोज बाई द सीरियल ऑफ साइंस स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम एरीज अब क्या बचा कृतिका जो कि सूर्य का नक्षत्र है जो कि एक संघार नक्षत्र है उसका फर्स्ट पद जाता है सेजिटेरियस में दूसरा पद जाता है कैप्रिकॉर्न में तीसरा पद जाता है अक्वेरियस में और चौथा पद जाता है पाइसिस में तो क्योंकि संघार नक्षत्र है कृतिका सूर्य का नक्षत्र है तो इसका थर्ड और फोर्थ पद अक्वेरियस और पाइसिस में जाएगा Every third nakshatra will follow this scheme of Navansha. Kritika is the third nakshatra. आपने देखा कि ये start Aries से होता है और finish Pisces में होता है. तीन नक्षत्रों को cover करता है इस तरह से. मतलब ये बारह signs जो हैं वो तीन नक्षत्रों को cover करते हैं. ठीक? तो अब Pisces के बाद यानी Kritika के बाद जब हम Rohini लेंगे, तो उसका first पद कहाँ जाएगा? फिर से Aries में जाएगा. उसका सेकंड पद फिर से टॉरस में जाएगा वगैरह वगैरह तो हमारे काम का तो केवल संघार नक्षत्र हैं और उनका भी थर्ड और फोर्थ पद है तो हम हमेशा पाएंगे कि जितने भी संघार नक्षत्र हैं और उनके जो थर्ड और फोर्थ पद हैं वो नवांश चार्ट में हमेशा अक्वेरियस और पाइसिस में ही दिखाई देंगे लेट देर बी नो मिसअंडरस्टैंडिंग अबाउट दैट मैं अब आपको चार एग्जांपल्स दिखा रहा हूं जिन पर हमने लगा के देखा तो हमें बड़े अच्छे रिजल्ट्स दिखाई दिए ये इंदिरा गांधी का साउथ इंडियन चार्ट है ये नॉर्थ इंडियन बर्थ चार्ट है 
साउथ इंडियन नवांश यहां दिखाया गया है नॉर्थ इंडियन नवांश यहां दिखाया गया है शटबल की हमें ज्यादा इस प्रेजेंटेशन में जरूरत नहीं है फिर भी कोई देखना चाहता है तो देख ले और विंशोत्तरी जो हमारे लिए रेलिवेंट है वो हमने यहां लगा के रखी है सो दिस इज हाउ आई एम शोइंग यू दी चार्ट अब अगर हम हमारा ध्यान जाएगा नवांश के ऊपर तो नवांश में हम देखते हैं कि कोई भी प्लैनेट 11 या 12 में नहीं है एक्सेप्ट मून 11 और 12 का मतलब कुंभ और मीन अक्वेरियस और पाइसिस और यहां तो बिल्कुल ही सिंपल है 11 वुड ऑलवेज बी एट दिस लोकेशन एंड 12 वुड ऑलवेज बी हियर सो वी सी दैट मून इज इन अक्वेरियस एंड देयर फोर इट इज इन दुरितांश Do you think it applies on uh, her? Indira Gandhi had her moon in at at four twenty six in Uttara Shada. Uttara Shada is Sun's nakshatra, and Sun is one of the Sanghar nakshatra. Sanghar, I mean Sun's nakshatras are Sanghar nakshatras. तो यानी मून जो है वो संघार नक्षत्र में तो आ ही रहा है अब देखना ये है कि ये कौन से चरण में है तो उत्तराषाढ़ा चार डिग्री जो है ये थर्ड नवांश में जाता है यू you नो know, इसका पहला जो चरण है वो तो सेजिटेरियस में ही आ जाता है उत्तराषाढ़ा का दूसरा चरण खत्म हो गया जीरो से लेकर थ्री ट्वेंटी तक में तो ये 426 जो है ये थर्ड चरण हो गया और जैसा हमने देखा कि अगर थर्ड चरण में है तो प्लेनेट डेफिनेटली अक्वेरियस में ही आएगा संघार नक्षत्रों के लिए नॉट फॉर ऑल नक्षत्र बट संघार नक्षत्रों के लिए वो हमेशा अक्वेरियस में ही आएगा ऑल राइट right. तो अब हमें क्या देख रहा है ये तो क्लियर हो गया ये समझ में आ गया हमको कि इस महिला का मून वो अक्वेरियस में है इसलिए दुरितांश में है आपको पता ही होगा कि बेसिकली हर मदर वॉज अ वेरी सिकली वोमन मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स शी वॉज सिक हर हजबेंड वॉज यूजली अवे इन इन द जेल्स और इन इज पोलिटिकल स्ट्रगल्स एंड शी वॉज लेफ्ट अलोन एंड शी यूजली वॉज सिक राइट फ्रॉम द बर्थ ऑफ इंदिरा गांधी एंड शी डाइड ऑन ट्वेंटी एथ फेब्रुवरी नाइनटीन थर्टी सिक्स when indira gandhi was very young and she was running mars venus saturn she was running mars venus and saturn so from the point of view of mother saturn is aspecting moon moon is mother okay and venus venus is the lord of the fourth house that would also represent mother and saturn is for the mother saturn is again the fourth lord and the fifth lord and it is aspecting the the karaka of mother moon so that was the reason uh, her mother was uh, not well and finally she had a premature death and that gave a lot of insecurity to uh, indira gandhi uh, and her political career was always suffering from this problem uh, that she was insecure and when she was pushed to the wall finally she acted or reacted and then there was some serious decision which altered the nature of politics uh, during her entire political period there is something more that we must see uh the moon in durishtansh was also responsible for her separation from the husband 
and his premature death, death, death. Feroz Gandhi, her husband, died on 8th September 1960, which means she was about 43 years old at that time, when she was running Jupiter, Mercury, Venus. Jupiter is here in the fifth house from the husband's house. And Mercury is in the sixth. Mercury is the lord of the sixth and the ninth house for the husband. And Venus is uh, uh, not immediately relevant here, except that Venus is the Karaka of spouse. And it is afflicted by Ketu and Rahu. I mean, in, in, Venus falls in Rahu Ketu uh, axis. So, and another thing that we find is the moon is situated in the seventh house of the Rashi chart. Moon is in the seventh house here. And as such, it would represent the spouse. The planets and the Lord of the seventh house represent the spouse. Moon is also the Lagna Lord of Navansh. Her Lagna is Vargotam. So therefore, Cancer is also the Navansh Lagna. So Navansh Lagna also represents the uh, spouse. Navansh is mainly seen for spouse. So therefore, the Lagna of this divisional chart would represent the spouse. And this Lord of this house is situated in the eighth house of Navansha. So this is the house, this is the chart for the spouse, where the Lagna Lord has gone in the eighth house. And in addition, it has it happens to be in the Duritansh. If you would bring in the concept of Rashi Tulya Navansha, where you pick up the planet from the Navansha and place it in the D1, that makes the Rashi Tulya Navansha. So if we put this exercise in place here, we pick up the Aquarius moon and bring it to the birth chart which would mean that it is falling here. So the Navansh moon is falling here. So Rashi Tulya, in Rashi Tulya Navansha, it is here. Now, from the main Lagna, from the birth Lagna, moon is falling in Nidhanansh. Those who are familiar with the concept of uh, Rashi Tulya Navansha, they would find out that this being the eighth house from the main Lagna, this is called Nidhanansh, Nidhan, which is associated with the eighth house. So moon has several problems. So one can say that if a planet is in Duritansh and has several other problems, also several other afflictions, then there can be some very severe and serious damage to the jiva reflected by the planet. In this case, moon is the karaka for mother. And moon, since it happens to be in the seventh house here and the lord of the Navansha Lagna, therefore it represents spouse also. And both of them died premature deaths. So uh, a Duritansh moon is very much uh, responsible for it. But mind you, if there are no further reflections to a Duritansh planet, then it is not so bad. We will come to that part when it is bad, when it is not bad, a little later also. But uh, this is an illustration for uh, how to use the planet in Duritansh. Uh, Okay, let's go to the next slide. This side slide belongs to Nathuram Godse, the man who killed 
महात्मा गांधी कैन यू स्पॉट दी दुरितांश प्लैनेट्स very simple if you see the south indian chart sun and rahu and mars and moon are in duritansh you can see in the north indian chart also sun and rahu are in aquarius and mars and moon are in pisces okay so these four planets are in duritansh not just one and uh, we need not go into the sangar nakshatra etc because that concept you have already seen and you have also seen that those things fall in aquarius and pisces only now what is important here is ye jo char planets hain sun rahu moon and mars ये पूर्ण परमात्मांश प्लैनेट्स भी माने जाते हैं और इसका यूज इस तरह से किया जाता है सन मून मार्स एंड राहु सरप्राइजिंगली राहु इज आल्सो इंक्लूडेड इन पूर्ण परमात्मांश प्लैनेट्स इनका यूज ऐसे किया जाता है कि जिसकी भी पत्री में ये चारों प्लैनेट स्ट्रांग हो अच्छे वेल प्लेस्ड हो और स्ट्रांग हो उनकी लाइफ काफी अच्छी जो होती है उनका फेट ज्यादा अच्छा होता है दे राइज वेरी हाई इन लाइफ ठीक है तो ये पूर्ण परमात्मांश का साथ स्पेशल गुण है और कपूर सर इसको बहुत महत्व देते हैं और उसके लिए उन्होंने मुझे बहुत सारे एग्जांपल्स भी दिखाए हैं ठीक है तो ये जो चार प्लैनेट जो पूर्ण परमात्मांश हैं इनके साथ एक और खास चीज है जो इस चार्ट में ही एप्लीकेबल है और वो है कि दीज फोर प्लैनेट्स रिप्रेजेंट द सेल्फ खुद को रिप्रेजेंट करते हैं ये कैसे मंगल जो है मार्स वो लगन में ही बैठा है सो द प्लैनेट्स दैट आर इन लग्न they would represent the self then moon moon is the alternative lagna so that also represents the self you can say the mind of the self but moon being alternative lagna can also indicate the body and of course my mind also then sun sun is obviously the uh, nitya atma karaka sun is the karaka for the first house aur char atma karak alag hota hai lekin jo nitya karak hai agar aap gemini mein na jaye parashri tak ki simit rakhe to suri to atma karak hota hi hai aur sath mein hai uske rahu badi close degrees ke andar kyunki wo राहु अडेप्ट इट सेल्फ अकॉर्डिंग टू दी एसोसिएशन इट हैज राहु डजेंट एक्ट सो मच इंडिपेंडेंटली इफ इट इज प्लेस विद अदर प्लान सो राहु हैज अक्वायर्ड दैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ सन एज वेल एज मर्करी एंड मर्करी इज द लगना लॉर्ड राइट तो राहु भी पूरी तरह से सेल्फ को ही इंडिकेट कर रहा है क्योंकि ये सन और मर्करी के साथ है तो ये जो चारों प्लान जो इनके दुरितांश में है वो सेल्फ को भी इंडिकेट सेल्फ को भी इंडिकेट कर रहे हैं बिसाइज अदर थिंग्स दैट दे मे बी डूइंग ओके सो व्हाट डू वी फाइंड हियर ही वाज हैंग्ड ऑन फिफ्टींथ नवंबर 1949 इन जुपिटर सैटन राहु सिंस ही कमिटेड द क्राइम ऑफ असैसिनेटिंग गांधी सो ही वॉज हैंग्ड दो द जज 
uh, was very impressed with the arguments that he put forward in his own defense. He did not hire a lawyer. He defended himself. But the atmosphere in the country at that time was such that how could the assassinator of Mahatma Gandhi be spared? So he was not spared. And well, it's a part of his um, horoscope that he had to be killed violently himself because Mars is aspecting the eighth house. His Mars from Lagna is aspecting the eighth house. And the sun is all Saturn is also aspecting the eighth house. So those people whose Saturn and Mars both influence the eighth house, they usually have violent deaths. And I have seen many examples of this. It doesn't mean that all such people would be having a violent death. And violence can be of various violence can be of various natures. किसी ने मार दिया आपका एक्सीडेंट हो गया आप गिर गए कहीं से या नेचुरल डेथ नहीं है कुछ स्पेशल डेथ होती है इन लोगों की तो इसकी ये तो स्पेशल डेथ अपनी लिखा के लाया ही था एंड ही वाज हैंग ऑन जुपिटर सैटर्न राहु सो जुपिटर इज दी मार्का ऑब्वियसली एंड सैटर्न इज द एट्थ लॉर्ड and rahu is in the 12th with sun so this combination was not too good for him what is interesting to note here is that his fifth lord venus is exalted aspected by jupiter and moon both jupiter venus combinations of any kind of this kind of aspect are considered very good and in gemini even venus moon are considered very good and in parashri moon and jupiter are also considered very good and jupiter is even aspecting is the sun and rahu so those people who think that he was a lunatic who killed mahatma gandhi they have to think twice because his fifth lord as well as moon moon the karaka for manas it is in the um, company of two great benefics and it is aspected only by mars which uh, of course is adverse in this case so therefore the, the violence was his method of handling things right so we see that whenever planets there may be more afflictions here to these duritansh planets but duritansh planets definitely caused a havoc in its own personal life okay let's go to another chart mahatma gandhi maybe mahatma gandhi should have been taken before nathuram got say because nathu has already killed mahatma gandhi what are we doing with his chart here well what we are doing in his chart is that in pisces there is his moon in pisces his moon is so very clearly visible which means his moon would give him trouble so what are the kinds of troubles that are, that can be expected first of all of course moon stands for mother in his case moon is even aspecting the house of mother moon is in cancer which is the kal purush fourth house so moon is closely connected with mother and that is in duritansh so what happened with him he lived with his mother for a very short period he went away to england early leaving behind his mother his father had already expired so he lost his father as well as mother premature so moon is signifying his mother she died when he was about 22 years old which is certainly premature death and his father died when he was 16 years old 
why are we talking about father when we are considering moon because moon is in the 10th house so 10th house also represents father there has always been a controversy whether it is the 9th house which is uh, father's house or whether it is the 10th house which is the father's house my take on that is that there are two aspects to a father one is the one who helps you give birth he is the cause of your birth he provides some important parts of his body which generate the the child so therefore the self of a native has to be fifth from the house of the father therefore the ninth house of the chart should represent father so that logic is very clear but there is another logic which is no less important and that is all of you know already that your father is the spouse of your mother whether wedded or unwedded but if your father and mother did not come together then you wouldn't have been produced and there is absolute certainty about fourth house being the house of mother as they say mother is a certainty uh, father is an uncertainty or is a matter of conjecture so mother is definitely fourth house so her spouse has to be the 10th uh, house so both the logics are very clear so that is why this controversy whether to take 9th house or the 10th house for father so what i understand is when it comes to the paternity then the father should be taken from the 9th uh, house but there is another aspect to your being and that is the father looks after you he provides for you and he educates you he makes you a man out of a child most fathers do that so therefore his role from the 10th house is also an important one and the role and he he usually continues the role of the uh, the spouse of the mother otherwise the child himself is in trouble so therefore both the situations are correct so uh, in practice you can take both that would be best uh, but i think there are different traditions in north and south india so you can stick to your tradition but just remember that there is a, another point of view which is equally uh, valid which also has some truth in it okay so mahatma gandhi lost his mother and father both uh, early so that is justified by his moon being in uh, doritaj but then there is there are other aspects to it also his moon is uh, with rahu so that is a clear affliction and that also shows that this man was probably often very confused or had some very unorthodox ideas and uh, pretended to be somebody who he wasn't remember that the, the he is also in the fourth charana of ashlesha which is uh, the sarvadrekha so his moon was in sarvadrekha plus Ra, plus rahu is there which uh, is an incarnation of sarpa himself so there are uh, there, there there were problems with his moon and which were not restricted just to the mother or father but also his way of thinking his manas he he also committed a lot of um, himalayan blunders of which many are being suffered by india even today this is not to 
bring down Mahatma Gandhi from the high pedestal that has, he has been placed in the country. His positive contributions are so immense that his negative contributions always are brushed us under the carpet. But there is sufficient time that has passed to now evaluate what were the positive contributions of Gandhi and what were uh, the bad ones. There is a monumental literature on Mahatma Gandhi's contributions because Mahatma Gandhi wrote so much. He himself wrote so much and his, and his disciples wrote so much and his followers wrote so much about him that his mistakes have been you know, relegated to a, a lower uh, proportion. But the mistakes were probably much, much bigger than uh, the positive contributions. But these are matters of opinion. And I leave that to you. What is interesting here is that even for Mahatma Gandhi, just like Nathuram God said, Mars is aspecting the eighth house. And so is Saturn. So eighth house is very clearly suffering from the aspects of Mars and Saturn. And Mars is, of course, the double marka here, which is with the Lagna Lord Venus. And it is already suffering from the 12th Lord Mercury. And um, uh, they are not in Duritansh, but they are at least in Sanghar nakshatras. I mean, Ascendant and Mercury, because they are in Rahu's nakshatras. And that Rahu's nakshatra, Rahu himself, the nakshatra lord, is with this Duritansh planet. Okay. And once Mahatma Gandhi died, nobody is the taker of all the big gyan that he uh, distributed around for so many years. We are uh, all aware of the existence of a person whose name is Lalu Yadav. And he is one of the most sort of maverick politicians we have had. He has certainly left a name in the history. I mean, I'm sure he's going to soon leave important footprints in history because he's rather sick. What do we find here in the Navansha? Saturn and Mercury are in Duritansh. In uh, in, uh, in in Navansha, we uh, I mean in the South Indian style we find it even uh, easier. Mercury and Saturn and Venus. Of course, here also Venus retrograde, uh, exalted is there. Probably this exaltation and retrogression in the fifth house has given him so many children, but none none of them really worth it. Okay, so uh, since it's it's a, not a face-to-face -face class, it is difficult to follow my usual style of asking a question and then going ahead. What do you predict for him, and why? How do you analyze that his Mercury, Saturn, and Venus are in uh, Duritansh? You see, Saturn is the 10th Lord and the 11th Lord. And it has only 23 Bindus. It is in an inimical sign with the inimical Lord of it. But both of them are aspecting the 10th house. In Navansha, instead of moon mercury comes close to it and that is also in duritansha and venus is also in duritansha venus for the aries lagna is a double marka being the lord of the second and the seventh and in even in navansha we find venus is the seventh lord and the twelfth lord that is there in the uh, fifth house and that is in Duritansh, further aspected by the Lagna Lord Mars and the 10th Lord Sun. 
but these are for us for the time being are not that relevant as compared to mercury and saturn so that question that was being asked is being reflected here that saturn is in its own house yet he has gotten into a problem he has been recently put into jail once again what do we find here as soon as he started rahu's dasha he was put into jail once again and rahu acts as per saturn right so rahu's dasha madasha antardasha and pratyantar dasha just started in february they started in on on 12th february 2022 and after this a few days later he was put behind the jail put behind the bars so what's so wrong about one would say that saturn here was in a kendra 10th lord being uh, 10th house being aspected by the 10th lord and the fourth lord it should be a powerful thing yes it is powerful thing and even the uh, 11th lord has become powerful in sat um, in in navansha because it is in its own house and the eighth lord is still with it i mean here mercury the eighth lord is with saturn here saturn himself was the uh, sorry eighth lord no 11th lord here the uh, 11th lord saturn was himself so what has gone wrong the saturn saturn is the karaka for profession the uh, omissions that he committed the 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 acts that he committed during his time they are the ones who became ripe as for the karma phala this has happened within his lifetime god was very eager to punish him didn't wait for his didn't want to wait for his next life to punish him for his karma he, he, even the 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 judiciary of uh, of this world has punished him uh imagine a man who came from the tribe where the rear cows steals the food of the cows so it had to be uh, he had to be punished and he is being punished and the main responsibility of that falls on saturn the the 10th lord uh, because saturn doesn't directly have the jiva connected to it Uh, except maybe employees so uh, we cannot say that uh, uh, it's uh, his uh, employees who got suffered or maybe we don't know whether his employees got uh, had suffered anything or not but we certainly know that he had had bad equation with his brother in law his wife's brother so uh mercury and saturn um, being in um, uh, in duritansha and mercury is the eighth lord and venus which is also in duritansha is in the 12th house uh, is the 12th lord so we we find that the problems uh, of uh, these two planets he is suffering from and uh, the other problem is that his children haven't proved anything much at least not as yet and then i would like to show you another chart here we find that rahu venus and moon are in duritansh 
this is the horoscope of a lady who has some problems with the seventh house first of all there is a debilitated moon and then there is a there is rahu with it and both are in duritansh moon as well as rahu so she had to quit her husband's house after 10 years of marriage well when it comes to moon's duritansh moon being in duritansh we would often jump to the conclusion that oh there must be something wrong with the mother no this lady enjoyed the uh, patronage of her mother till she died in old age and she was close to the mother so mother is not at fault at all i mean mother is not the one she suffered about because there is jupiter in the fourth house so a strong jupiter in the fourth house did not let the mother uh, have a problem but the location of moon which is in duritansh and the location of rahu created this problem for her and she's lived a single life ever since she uh, left her husband's house now uh, let me summarize the topic for you most of the topics have been covered but summary may help some of you people any sanghar planet in third or fourth pada is extra sensitive to cause harm it tends to cause problems particularly from or to the relative indicated by karakatwa of the planet so this relates to jeev sukha the planets in duritansh cause pain agony or even death even if they are natural benefics but of course you can make a distinction that the natural malefics would be worse Nat even and even natural benefics are not uh, are not pardoned they also create some problems experience indicates that the native loses jeev sukha of the relative or self as indicated by the duritansh planet the happiness connected to the non jeeva karakatwas are however still enjoyed that's the general experience that the non jeeva aspect for example your job and your wealth and your uh, you know prestige in the society etc they may not suffer is the self saturn for lalu is the is the real misery he himself is suffering from both the uh, jail as well as from several uh, chronic diseases okay then second point of summary is the adverse results may be experienced as per the natural karakatwa of the planet as per the placement of the planet as per the lordship of the planet mostly it would be seen in d1 but sometimes d9 can also give you a hint what the problem really is all the above that is these things can be seen in d1 and d9 charts now the important point which i have been repeating again and again here is it is only further and added afflictions to the planet in duritansh that the result is really adverse otherwise it may only cause minor but constant irritation okay then association of benefits can ameliorate the adversity a planet can be in duritansh in two ways one by being in aquarius or two by being in pisces in the navansha chart this has to be seen in the navansha chart not in d1 now the thing is this the crux of the matter lies here the one in aquarius is likely to be more harmful since saturn the navanshesh which is which means dispositor of planet in duritansh is a strong malefic that is saturn if the planet is in aquarius then 
the dispositor of the Duritansh is Saturn, which is a strong malefic and is called the Dandadhikari. Saturn is famous as a Dandadhikari. For your previous commissions and omissions, you will be punished either by the courts here in, in, in society or by God. Now, another thing is, if Saturn in Navansha is afflicted or badly placed, it would indicate very adverse results. In such cases, the result is usually death due to association of Saturn with death. You know, Saturn is also, uh, though it is not the Karka for, it is a Karka for the eight, though it doesn't cause the uh, uh, Karako Bhavna Shai there. But Saturn is the Karka of death. Therefore, Duritansh planets may indicate premature death of the uh, Jiva connected. Then another reason why uh, this thing can create more problems is that Aquarius in Sanskrit is known as Kumbha which means that it is a pot that stores all the past and present karmas. You know, in, uh, in Kal Purush, it is the 11th house. Kumbha, that's where it falls. So after the churning of all the good and the bad karmas, the essence is stored in the 11th house, that is Kumbha, whose phala has to be experienced. That is why Aquarius becomes important. And so therefore, Saturn has several connotations here, being Dandadikari, being the Karaka of the eighth house, and being uh, the Lord of Kumbha, where all the good and bad deeds are stored. If the Navanshesh is Jupiter, which means the planet is in Pisces, and is well associated and well placed, it takes much sting out of the planet in Duritansh. Pisces is the 12th house of the Kalpurush. Now we are giving you the reason why even Pisces has been included in the Duritansh. Pisces is the 12th house of the Kalpurush. This is where the decision is made whether the soul will take rebirth or get moksha. You know, in the 11th house in Aquarius, the pot contains all the good or bad karma in, in its essence form. So when it goes to the next stage, it goes to the 12th house, Pisces. And that's where the decision is taken by the forces above, by the forces that God has put into motion. Uh, that whether the person would take rebirth or not. Now, the Duritansh in its application is a bit similar to other Kara planets, such as the 22nd Rekana or 64th Navansha planets. You know, these two are Kara planets. We often neglect them. We don't see who the 22nd Rekana planet or the Lord of 22nd Rekana, and similarly, 64th Navansha. So these should be seen just as you would see Duritansh or any other Kharab planet. So these things should be seen carefully. But what is the difference between the standard Kharab planets and Duritansh? That is, but here the conceptual basis is placement in certain nakshatras and certain charnas, and not Rashis or the 8th house. You know, 22nd Rekana and 64th Navansha are uh, they are important because they have an element of eighthness, something to do with the eighth. Atme ka kuch unme gun ya durgun a jata hai 22nd rekna or 64th mein. Isliye unko itna bura manna gaya hai. Lekin Duritansh ka concept hi bilkul alag hai. Wo nakshatra aur unke charano per dependent hai. So the basis is entirely different. Though uh, results can be similar. But I would personally think that the uh, Duritansh covers more of uh, life than these Drikara and 64th Navansha because these Kara planets would act when their Dasha etc. comes or transit comes. 
but Duritansh may not wait for the Dasha. It, it can create uh, problems or, or the standing problems or the irritative problems, irritating problems uh, for uh, most of your life. If you have further any questions, I would be happy to answer.